Now, one more thing that I want to talk about is the SSL and T, uh, TLS basics. Um, so now you saw that yesterday we, we are doing the HTTP, but basically um, in the real time, we will not be using HTTP, we'll be using HTTPS. So you need the certificates to be loaded, right? And uh, you do have the option to load the certificates while it is uh, it is um, purchased by you by from any third party vendor or or uh, if you want to uh, generate one uh, from the ACM, which is the AWS certified uh, certificate manager, you can do that and use it over here. Now, how to use it depends on the type of uh, load balancer that you're using. Uh, if you're using say ALB, you need to go into the target groups. You need to basically go into the uh, what you call the um, targets basically uh and and add targets and add that uh, the cipher enable the cipher and then add the certificates inside the tg but if you are using the clb where we don't use the tg you can just directly go to the clb and um, attach the uh, ssl certificate i will just demonstrate the uh, options where you can see the option ssl uh, basically refers to secure socket layer used to encrypt connections TLS refers to transport layer uh, security, which is a newer version of SSL. Nowadays, uh, TLS certificates are mainly used, but people still refer this as SSL. So if I'm uh, saying SSL, that means TLS, right? Uh, public SSL certificates are issued by CA. So you can have, uh, as I said, you can go to any CA and just uh, get your certificate and load it here, import it here. Uh, Examples you can just think about it semantic, GoDaddy, um, Global Sign, DigiCert, all those. Um, uh, type of CA, right? SSL certif certificates have an expiration date you set and must be renewed. Renew, depend on the on, uh, on the provider that you have uh, purchased this, you will get an expi expiration date of your SSL certificate. And then over time, you will have to renew depending on the policies of the company. Now, load balancer and SSL certificate, how it happens. Now, as I said, um, the load balancer can also act as a proxy device and, and it can do the SSL turn to termination uh, so that means you don't need to uh, attach all your ssl certificates on the ec2 instance rather it would be better to have one um, um, ssl certificate on top of your uh, elb now that depends if you have multiple applications and you use to uh, you want to use different certificate for different applications uh, that also is possible which is uh, what we will be seeing in in in, in a few moments but just to make you understand, so this can be a, a case wherein uh, your uh, user is using HTTPS to connect to the load balancer DNS. And from the back end, it can, it can be a HTTP from your load balancer to your EC2 instance. I think I, I spoke, it, uh, spoke about it yesterday and yeah, that should be clear now. Uh, you can manage certificates using ACM that, as, as I said, this is a service provided by your AWS, AWS certificate manager, or you can have uh, something that you got from your, um, uh, I mean, public CA. You can create, upload your own certificates alternatively. Um, that is what you get from your public uh, CA. Uh, now you have to see if you, if you are going to, uh, upload the certificate, you have to go to the listener. Now, listener is something which we configure on the outside of the load balancer. Right? Uh, if you have, uh, this is where your clients will be coming, right? So inside a CLB, you will be directly uh, configuring a listener. So you'll, uh, till yesterday, we configured only HTTP listener. Now, in this case, when you are using SSL, you will be configuring a HTTPS listener. Right. And maybe you will be configuring a um, um, listener based on your application that is uh, running on your EC2 instances. So when, when we are talking about the TGs, uh, the listeners are basically configured inside the TGs, right? So that is the difference there. If you're using a CLB, you will directly go to the listener and then obviously you will enable a cipher and then you will set, uh, select the certificate. But in case you are using a TG, you will go inside the TG. Then you will again add a listener depending on the application that you're using. And then you can uh, again, I um, mean, um, attach a certificate there. Uh, you must specify a default certificate. Uh, you can add an optional list of search to support multiple domains. As I said, multiple applications uh, using multiple certificates that is possible, which basically brings me to the next point, which is called SNI, server name ad, uh, indication, which is uh, important if you're using multiple certificates. And this is how um, AWS can manage multiple certificates for multiple applications. So there should be a, a 
mechanism where, where uh, the application should know uh, what uh, certificate should I use and what certificate relates to which, which application, right? So that is done through the SNI. Ability to, to specify a security policy to support older versions of SSL and TLS. So it's supported legacy versions as well. Now let's talk about the SNI. This is what uh, solves the problem of loading multiple SSL certificates onto one web server, which is serving basically multiple websites or applications, you can say. And it's a newer protocol and requires the client to indicate the host name of the target in the initial SSL handshake. Uh, the server will uh, then find the correct certificate or return the default one. So you have to specify a default one if, if that, uh, uh, I mean, a request doesn't has any uh, host name related to any SSL handshake, then it will run with the uh, default one. Uh, only works for ELB and NLB, newer generation, CloudFront. So SNI will be only working from your ALB and NLB, not for the CLB, but yeah, inside CLB, you will be able to add the SSL certificate, but for only one application. That is a whole idea. It does not work for CLB older generations. Now, just try to understand the SNI concept. You have the ALB, uh, then you have the TGs, um, the two TGs, then you have basically two domains or two websites. Uh, and then you have different different certificates for that, which you have already loaded loaded in the ALB. Now the client comes um, uh, from outside and says, I would like to go to www.microcorp.com. And it basically goes to the ALB SNI. SNI says, okay, this is the certificate that you should use for mycorp.com. And then uh, use the correct SSL, provides that, and it, go, it can go to the particular uh, TG, whichever it is, right? And likewise, uh, if somebody else uh, comes with domain1.example.com, it will get the uh, particular SSL certificate and then it will be routed to the TG. Okay, Elastic Load Balancer SSL certificate, still we are uh, uh, using this. Uh, so as I said, CLB has uh, supports this only one by default, must use uh, multiple CLBs. Then again, you if you want multiple applications, obviously you have to go for multiple CLB and then you can load, uh, will be able to load multiple SSL certificates. ALB, you can do it uh, with this with a single ASB, ALB using the SNI, supports multiple listener. Uh, uh, that's why we will be able to uh, load multiple certificates, uh, uses SNI to make it work. Uh, network load balancer also supports multiple listeners with multiple SSL certificates. And again, you can use the SNI in the, in the backend to make it work. Okay, let's go back. Now I can see how many instances I have and also the status. So it's still in service. That means I will not be able to go and, uh, I mean, validate this. Uh, now let's go and uh, do the health check. Uh, let's see the settings on there. I'm doing, doing the health check on port 80. Uh, and these are the intervals. Uh, and then I can see the listener that I have uh, configured. I can go and edit the listener if I want, but I don't have the option to add multiple listeners, is it? Uh, but as I say, I can use the HTTPS right here. So that is when I will be going for the uh, certificate. So if you see here, I have to first uh, specify the, um, the cipher. Okay. I will specify the cipher first, save it, and then I can change the SSL. Now, now here you have the option to uh, upload um, the type of certificate you have. If, if you have it from an ACM, you can do it from here. You can upload your um, IAM certificate and you can have a private key and a chain and body uh, if you have it with yourself, right? So you can upload the certificate from here, but provided you have to add the listeners here. Cancel. <music>